five, that's right. <laughs> he turned it on. <laughs>
Good morning. I had to, I harassed as many people as I could to be here this morning. Good for and uh, I did. I harassed them. And uh, and I'm still going to wait for them at the door there. But I'm glad you guys are here. It is a it is uh, really good for us to be together. Um, I know that uh, summertime uh, things can be uh, you know kind of kind of weird for different reasons. People are traveling or people are just uh, vacationing. But I'm glad you guys are here. I know that uh, uh, Paul and Chuck they were vacationing last week, and we didn't understand why they couldn't just come back to church, but. They wouldn't do it. Uh, tonight, there is going to be a, a life group over at their house, and there's going to be hamburgers, and I don't know what else, but uh, we'll be dip because I'm bringing the dip. And it's going to be homemade from the store. And so, banana uh, pudding. Banana like, pudding, too. Oh, and put it really? Banana, like, oh, yeah, right. banana pudding. All right. All right. Uh, so that's going to be fun. It's a really good time, guys. I'm telling you, Trey uh, Sheeran does a really good job with uh, teaching that and leading that, and it's a valuable time. So uh, let's have a prayer together, can we? Let's pray together. Father, we we get to uh, we get to come before you. Your word, I think, of in Hebrews four, it says that we get to come boldly before your throne um, because of the high priest that we have um, being Jesus. He, uh, he knew all the temptations that we have and yet he was without sin. And I thank you for that. I thank you that we follow someone that um, had no sin and yet lived here with all of its temptations. And Father, it's, just, it's, it's good for us to come before you. We want to know you better. We want to be close to you. Father, I love that story in Daniel where, uh, where, where uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were in that fire and there was your son. The Father just teaches us that <clears throat> the things that we go through in life, uh, things that just surprise us and um, whatever it is that you'll walk with us through the fire. Thank you. Father, you're kind to us. We love these children here today. We think uh, we see you as you're kind to give us these children, to, to be around these children. We want them to learn of you. We want them to learn how great you are and how, how loving you are. And you are somebody to follow. Lord, bless this church. I just, I love the people here, and I can just see, uh, I just feel like the church can just explode with people at any moment. I just, I do, because the, the spirit of Christ is here in your people. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I heard somebody talk about some banana pudding. Yeah. Be there. Yes. <laughs> all right. Good to see all of you. I'm glad that you all can make it this morning. Let's go ahead and let's worship together and definitely sing along.
brothers and sisters. It is nice to be back in the church. Uh, some of you that were out uh, don't know I missed last Sunday. I was sick. So uh, I'm so proud to be back and I'm proud that some of you are back from uh, Fort Baldwin Beach and from Orange Beach and wherever else some of you have been gone to. But we're so proud to have you here today in this particular service. Like the man that's sitting up in the booth uh, said in a couple of times, yeah, Galen, uh, when we met each other, greeted each other, he says, tell someone you love them. Now, he didn't finish the rest of it with, it may be the last time you get to see them to tell them that. You know, and that's the point I want to make about today's communion. I believe Jesus was, in fact, telling the disciples that he loved them and it was going to be the last time in a peaceful situation that they that he would be able to tell them that you know that he did love them he in fact even washed their feet he washed their feet and then they had communion which we are about to celebrate we in this church celebrated every sunday and we intend to open it up to anyone that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, that through him, just like they sang, we have grace. Grace whether we deserve it or not, but we have grace. Will you bow in prayer with me, please? Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit in and amongst every one of us here now. Uh, clear our minds of all the clutter that might be from what's going on and let us take in and soak in this service in every way possible through the hymns, through the sermon, and especially through this communion because we are remembering your son in the very best way and he's telling us he loves us. I pray this through Jesus and we say amen. Amen. as I said on that night before he was crucified he was telling them again he loves them and he loves you and he wants you to remember him and we remember him now they broke bread he broke bread and he blessed 
blessed him, and he said, Eat this, this is, represents my body, which will be shed for you. And then after the meal, they poured the wine. And he says, drink of this. This represents my blood, which will be shed for you to wash away your sins. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Holy Father, we just thank you so much for this privilege of being here in your house to worship your name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice that he gave on Calvary's cross on that, that terrible mountain. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we can never repay the price of that cost. All we can do is, is follow our Savior and do as he commands. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for everyone that enters this building. Yes. I pray for those that are not here for one reason or the other. And I ask that you watch over them and protect them and bring them back to us safe and sound. Heavenly Father, we, we thank the frontline medical workers and first responders for the jobs that they have done and will continue to do. We thank you for our veterans, our active military service. Uh, they are the ones that have kept this uh, safe to, to worship your heavenly name. Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us for where we fail you because we fail you each and every day. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we pray in Jesus Christ for his heavenly precious name. Amen. All right, if you would go ahead and stand up and we'll continue with worship.
Amen. I'm going to read the scriptures today. We're going to start in Revelation 18, 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues.
very rich. Very rich. Mm. Let's pray. Father, um, we come into your word and, and, and uh, we see things that are very, very humbling. Very humbling. Asking for your favor upon our time these next few minutes. These are yours. These are yours, and we want to hear from you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We come before you, not in anyone's name but Jesus. We would say together that Christ is the best thing that's ever happened to any of us. And it is your presence that we long for. We long for you. We long for your holiness and your righteousness. We long to fellowship with you. And we need you. We pray in Jesus' name. Wow. Well, the book of Revelation is a uh, is simply the unveiling of things to come. Simply the unveiling of things to come. And man, I've heard some really uh, good preachers uh, that I think of, and some very knowledgeable guys, and they'll they'll say this that you and I would agree with, and that is that uh, his coming is very near. His coming is very near. Now, now, some of you probably would say, well, Don, how in the world did we get to chapter 18, man? I mean, we, you know, there's part of 15 and 16 and 17. You're bypassing. How can you do that? Well, uh, I did it for a reason uh, for us this first time going through the book of Revelation together. Uh, and uh, uh, what I want to do for a moment is kind of review with you. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to talk about 16 and 17, but I need you to really take the time to read it because it's pretty incredible. If you read the book of Revelation, um, it's broken down uh, pretty clearly. Uh, some things are hard to understand. There's no doubt about that. But it's fun to read and, and contemplate and consider how other scriptures uh, fit into this. Danny's class is going through the book of Revelation even now. And so if you want more details, go to his class. Danny, would that be accurate? Okay. All right. Uh, so in chapter 1... Uh, in, in, for example, in chapter one, we see the, the we see a vision of Christ. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. If you want to read it and just enjoy uh, looking at His presence, then you go to chapters two and three and you begin to look at the you begin to look at the uh, the churches. And what's interesting is is there's so much to be drawn from there that that, that literally we will be drinking from that our, our entire lives because there's so much there about the churches there at that time. And many people, many really good preachers have seen how the, each of the different churches kind of describe different church ages throughout the history. And the last one being that seventh chapter, and that's the one that they, 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 they believe that they're rich, but they're really poor, blind and naked, and they don't even know it, but they think they're rich. And uh, uh, I pray that God would help us to look beyond that and not have this idea that somehow that we are rich because we are bankrupt without him. And I hope that we live that way, that we're bankrupt without him. Uh, then you go on and uh, you can see in uh, chapters uh, four and five, and what we have is essentially we have uh, the what I, what I think of is all of a sudden we're in heaven uh, the rapture has taken place, and um, and 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 that that's what we see with the, the the time that's going on in heaven. And then you start at chapter six, all the way to eighteen, and you have the time of tribulation, which is a seven-year period that both uh, this book talks about and the book of Daniel talks about. And I have to just share this thought with you. You know, sometimes I think even though I definitely want to be where Christ is and I long for that, I got to tell you that uh, 
that I care for those people that would be left behind. I care for them today. And I, uh, you know, I, I know that God is, is faithful and he will, he will take care of uh, people and he will, he will uh, uh, take care of his own and so forth. But I have to tell you that, that I, 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 I'm burdened for those that would be left behind today. So in chapter 16 through 18, we have that tribulation period and, and, and we actually have <coughs> uh, these, these judgments and, and we'll talk about them again later on, but we have these judgments, the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments and the uh, bowl judgments and they progressively get worse. And what's interesting is, is that there, are, there seems to be pauses in those judgments that uh, for, for people to become believers, we see what God's doing is he is he's seeking to awaken people uh, to him. And uh, and then if you go on from there, you go to chapter 19 and you have a, a visible return of Christ. And then you go to chapter 20. And what you have is uh, both both a thousand year reign on the earth as well as what's called the Great White Throne Judgment, which none of us want to be a part of because it's the judgment of those who never believe. Um, and then once you get to chapters 21 and 22, I mean, it just begins to describe heaven to us. And it's amazing. It's a beautiful picture. But what we have in, uh, we've been talking about these different judgments. We've talked about the the uh, seal judgments. We've talked about the ju uh, the uh, trumpet judgments, and and chapter sixteen and seventeen are talking about the uh, the, the bowl judgments, and they get very very serious. Um, they are these. One is that, and again, I, this is not enjoyable to talk about, but nonetheless, it exists. It talks about these sores that come up on people that's uh, that they can't get rid of. And then it begins to talk about how the seas will turn to blood. And then the, 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 the uh, if you can think about that, and all these animals dying, and then or, or, you know, the, the, all the creatures of the sea begin to die. And then, and then it talks about the, the natural waters turn to blood. And he tells the very specific reason why that happens. And he says, because you have spilled the blood of my people. And so that's why he turns this into blood for them. If you can imagine what that could possibly be like. And then the sun becomes uh, so hot and it scorches the people. And then he's actually going to bring darkness uh, on the earth. Uh, or excuse me, darkness is going to cover the earth. And people are going to nod their own tongues because of grief and because of, because of the pains of things that are going on. And what is so interesting in all of that that I've said is that if you go to chapter 9 and you find that they refuse to repent, you go to chapter 16 and it says it again, they refuse to repent. And the end of chapter 16, it actually says that they, uh, they, they, they blasphemed his name. Um, and, and, and it goes back to Romans 1, where Romans 1 says that that they knew they were doing things that deserved judgment, but they not only did them, but they approved of those who did them. And it's uh, the darkness, that's the, the, the capability of the darkness of man's heart. And so this morning, I want us to just stop for a moment and give thanks for something. The fact that, that, that you and I, are, our eyes are open to the fact of the beauty of Christ that the, 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 our eyes are open to the fact that Christ is, um, is all that we need, that we're, 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 uh, we're drawn to him and we're drawn to, 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 to be like him. We're drawn to follow after him and, to, and, and away from evil. You see, we're going to talk about these three things uh, this morning. We're going to talk about uh, the, how that the spirit of Babylon um, is what's, what's being exposed in chapter 18. I'll read it to you in just a moment. But what we're, what we're doing here is talking about how that, that, that Babylon, which, is, uh, uh, which, is, which, is, which began back in uh, Genesis chapter 11, the spirit of Babylon is this. It is a spirit 
of, of, of independence from God or absence from God. And, and, and it's driven by uh, a spirit of rebellion, a heart of rebellion that, that exists that's going on. In fact, go ahead and uh, if you'll just bring it up for me, Galen, those first three verses and kind of give you an idea. It says, it says uh, yes, after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven and he had a great authority and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. And let's go and look at verse 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. You see, Babylon, we know, if you go back to chapter 11, you guys remember, remember the Tower of Babel? That's where it all began. What happened with the Tower of Babel was that they said, um, they, as all the people were together, all the people of the earth were together. Let's make a name for ourselves. Make a name for ourselves. Let's build a, a tower into the heavens. Let's make a name for God is not mentioned at all. And uh, they are wanting to live without God. And it says, really interesting is, and I just think there's a, there's a, uh, there's a picture here. They said they, they used a brick. They used brick that they formed instead of rock. And what's interesting is because we know that Jesus is the rock. He is that which we want to build our foundation on. But yet they made brick in order to make, begin to make this tower. Of course, God comes down. He has to scatter them all. He scatters all of the... Uh, all of the people by mixing up their languages and so forth just to get them to go. And what's interesting is, is that in the end times, here's what's happening again, is that Satan is bringing everybody together and he's bringing everybody under one man. Isn't that interesting? How that, so, the, 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 so whether this is when it talks about in chapter 18, the, the, the great city of Babylon, or it says... Uh, uh, let's see, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a home for demons. Whether it is a city, nonetheless, it represents the spirit of Babylon. The spirit of Babylon, which is a spirit of, uh, of rebellion. A spirit of the absence of God. Now guys, you guys know, along with me, I was reading a couple days ago about a, uh, a school board in New Jersey. You guys might have seen this. A school board in New Jersey decided that they were going to uh, get rid of all the holidays. <clears throat> get rid of all the holidays. And they did. They took them all off of the, the, the uh, calendar, the school calendar, because they didn't want anybody to be offended. And they just put day off. <laughs> but they did. You guys see that? Anyway, anyway, it ended up they, you know, the school, you know, there's a lot of pushback and they ended up resigning. But that's the mentality that we have going on today. Um, and some of the things that I read about what's going on in some of our schools, it would just shock you. Uh, and uh, and then I don't know if I told you about this one, but about the uh, the valedictorian. I think I might have the valedictorian who was going to give her speech. And they, wouldn't, they didn't want her to talk about her faith. And it wasn't a sermon. It was just about how Christ had helped her. And they didn't want her to mention that. I mean, you see it, don't you? I mean, if you see how that we're, we're, we're it's like it's a, it's like a wave that's going on. Just get rid of the name, get rid of God, get rid of the name, especially Jesus. And let's get it out of here. But they don't mind the, the whole Muslim thing, but they, they want this whole Jesus thing. Uh, being taken out. It's very, very interesting. Um, and so uh, here's, what's, here's what I want you to see. Um, 
is just to so that you see that there's a pattern in the Bible. There's a pattern in the Bible. We, we can look at stuff and, and you look at it and, and you go, wait a minute, I remember reading about this somewhere else. So for example, here it can, it's coming to a head, here in chapter 18, it's coming to an absolute head. Just before Christ returns in chapter 19, it comes to a head. And what that is, is that, like I said, that spirit of rebellion, that spirit of independence from God, that absence of God, um, and they refuse to repent of their sins. But, but we, go, we find the same thing. If you go back to Genesis again, chapter 15, and what happens is, is that um, God tells Abraham, he tells him, look, what's going to happen is, is that, is that uh, the, all of your descendants are going to... Uh, they are going to be in captivity for 400 years. And at the end of that 400 years, the, the sin of the Amorites or the Canaanites have reached their full measure. And then we're, I'm going to set your, I'm going to set the people free. And I am going to rid the earth of these Amorites because their sin has reached its full measure. Well, that's what's going on again here in here in uh, in, Gen in uh, Revelation is that it's when it's reached its full measure. In other words, when man has completely, completely and totally walked away from God. Listen, I'm telling you, it would surprise you. It would surprise you because you you would think that people who are in their 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, that they had been to church and they had, listen, I'm telling you, I'm finding more people that are in those age, that age group uh, that, 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 that haven't gone to church and whether it's 20, 30, 40 years or never been to church at all. I'm, I, I am, I'm shocked by the things that I'm seeing. One of the cool things that I get to do is uh, with every single person I come in contact with, man, I get to come in and I get to tell them about the love of God. And I'm excited about that every day. That's why I can't wait to get to work because I get to do that. But nonetheless, it's, it would surprise you. It would surprise you. And today, um, it, I, I, my son and I were talking yesterday and, and we we're talking about how that you live a life you go through your life and you and, and this book is never brought to your attention. I tell you, there is no end to to uh, what can be thought of in the mind of men. And we hear about it. I mean, things that that shock me today, the things that they're coming up with in different places. I mean, somehow people think that if we defund the police, things will be better. You know, it's like. How can you come up with such an idea as that? Uh, or there are just so many things that come up in our culture that just sort of just go, man, where did you possibly come up with that idea? And uh, you take the scriptures because the Bible teaches us in Psalm 119 that, 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 that this book will give you wisdom more than, more than your teachers, more than your elders, and there's another one. But the nothing point is, is that this book right here gives wisdom to people and uh, how to live. And so, so that was the first thing that I want, want you to notice is this, is that in, in, in chapter 18, where what happens is, is that God exposes the rebellion. He exposes even the, the demons had full reign. They could do whatever, man. They had full reign. They would just, the, it says in there that Babylon, whatever that is, whatever that is, whether it's a city or it just represents what the, uh, what the whole world is existing in, the, the, it says that the demons had, you know, there, there was a home for demons, you see? And they could do whatever they wanted to do in the people. And God's going to expose it. And he's going to rid the world of it. The second thing that I want us to know is that, you ready? Is that the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Christ knows all who belong to him and will never be lost, even in the great deception. <clears throat> now, I'll just, I mean, I want to give several verses. In fact, I just want to look at a couple of them right now. Uh, 
uh, Galen. One is in uh, 2 Timothy 2 first and then Matthew 24. Um, but, but, but what I want you to understand is that uh, this thing is going to be so corrupt, but yet, but yet it says this. It says in verse 4, he says, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, nor in any of her plagues. Isn't that interesting? So, uh, so, so God knows those that are his. God knows those that are his. You get that? Let's, look at those. Let's go back to this passage in 2 Timothy. It says, uh, chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, God, uh, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. So I want you to think with me for just a moment. First of all, there's no fooling God, but God. Uh, uh, Matthew 7 says, uh, depart from me, you curse it, for I never knew you. Mm. So what I want to say is this, is that God knows those that are his. And God wants you to know that you're his as well. Romans 8 says this, that the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. All I'm telling you is, is that you also can be certain that you belong to him. You can be certain about it. Not hopefully, but certain. Because why? Because somebody tells you that you're a Christian? Uh, no. Or that you convinced yourself that you're a Christian? No. But the Spirit of God will actually teach you and show you that you belong to him. Um, and uh, one of the evidences is this. Are you ready? One of the evidences is that you desire to depart from evil. You desire to depart from evil. And uh, we're going to talk about that more in just a moment. But notice uh, Matthew 24. So he knows those are his. Look at Matthew 24. Notice what it says. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. Verse 24. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Um, you see, in other words, uh, God's going to preserve. Here's what, here's, here's what apparently God's doing, is that while judgment is coming down on Babylon and, and, and the angel just said Babylon it's you know it's going to be destroyed God pulls out his people he pulls them out and he says two things he says come out from them uh, and and so that you won't participate in their sins nor in their plagues in other words, God is going to be faithful to his people. There are going to be some people that are initially going to be following what's going on. They're going to be following. They just don't, uh, they, they haven't learned anything. They haven't known anything. Uh, by the way, this book is going to be absolutely amazing for believers in the time of revelation, during the time of tribulation. you know why? Because they're going to be able to look at it and go, wow, this is what's going to happen next. They're going to go, man, there's going to be, there, we're going to be, there's going to be a scorching from God. There's going to be, oh man, there's, I mean, the, the, there's going to be, a, the blood is going to, is going to be all over the waters and it's going to even mess up our, you know what I'm saying? They're going to be able to look at it. They're going to be able to tell what's going on next. This is going to be the truth <laughs> will be, 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 be clear for them, for those who want to know. But interestingly enough, some people love themselves and their sin more than God. And therefore, uh, that will show itself because they'll say, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Could I say something that I've said before? And, I, and, and you can think about this because uh, uh, I think that people who don't believe, who don't trust in Christ, won't want to be there. They just won't want to be there. 
it's pretty easy to see if you were to go back in, uh, you know, in, in the scriptures here. And uh, uh, it said, for example, I'm going to read something to you. This is out of chapter 16. It says, the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire, and they were seared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues. They, they knew he had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. I mean, I'm just telling you, that's how evil the heart can be. They don't want to give him glory. They knew that he wanted them to repent. You know how we know that they knew? Because they refused it. I don't know about you, but this is very humbling. Um, but the, but, but where, the, where the peace comes is God's not going to let his people go. The Bible says in John chapter 10, he says, nobody can take you out of my father's hand. Nobody can take you out of my hand, he says. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 10. He also says in John chapter 10 that my people hear my voice and they follow me. I don't know about you, but as you, as you gain to know the scriptures more and more, you know what you find out? You can listen to somebody speak for a little while and you go, man, I don't know about that person. And sometimes you can listen to somebody speak the word of God and you go, wow, that's, that sounds right. Because you can hear his voice. You can hear his voice. Mm, yeah, that sounds right. Because the Spirit of God is in your life, and you can hear those things. Um, first, uh, first, uh, first uh, Timothy 4 says, The Spirit clearly says in the latter times, Some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits, things taught by deceiving spirits. There's going to be those who are going to follow after, but apparently there's going to be some that are going to, that are going to be right there at the end, man, and they're still confused or, or, or something because they're still in the mix of this Babylon spirit, but God calls them out and he brings them out from amongst them. And I love that, which brings me to the last point, and it's this. Last point is this. The spirit of God exposes those or reveals those who belong to Christ because of the direction he leads them. Did you catch that? I want to close here. Um, I want to close. Let me just say this before I say my final words. I'm going to give, I'm just, I just want to look at one passage, Galen, and that's 2 Peter 3, okay? Uh, but let me just say this. You see, God knows his own. I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who has, uh, who has twins. Uh, you know, they're identical twins, and you look at them, man, I just can't, you know, you just can't. I have no idea which one it is, right? Mom and dad know. <laughs> they know. All they got, they can even just hear the voice. They know. They can look at them, and, go, and they know. They don't have to even hear anything. They look at them, they can hear their voice. They know. God knows those that are his. The Spirit of God exposes those. You know how he exposes it? Are you ready? I just want, we're going to look at one of many passages. Really, um, yeah, we could look at a number, but this is one we'll look at. You know how he does it? By the direction we're going. Psalm 23. He leads us in the path of righteousness. That's how you know Oh, they must belong. The Lord is not slow keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he does something. He patiently, he is patient with you. Uh, not wanting anyone. Oh, okay, you guys don't have that. I've got a, a thing of mine. I'm, I'm going to turn around. Uh, uh, not wanting anyone to perish. You love that. I don't know about you, but I, I get excited about that. Not wanting anyone to perish. They're good. I don't know. I like that. But everyone to come to repentance. Isn't that interesting? Can I say this before? I'm really, I'm really going to close in a moment. I want you to know that 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 re repentance is such a great word, man. I'm telling you, it's it's actually a really good word for a believer because because it's uh, because life gets so much better when we repent. It just does when we and and repentance is not a bad word for a believer, but it is for a non-believer. It's like, man, you're going to mess up my life. Get out of my face. 
Um, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief, like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Verse 11, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people are you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. Verse 12, as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, Lord, hurry up, you know, hurry, come, let's go, it's going to be good. Speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. Look at verse 13. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Where what? Righteousness dwells. Where righteousness dwells. You know about you? That excites me. Because I want, I want everything to be completely real. I want, to, I, want to, I want everything that I say, I mean, and, and it's really a goal that I have to live, but it's, I want everything to be real. I want it to be real. I want it to be from the heart. But sometimes my heart's corrupt. <laughs> and I don't want corruption anymore. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. I look forward to the day when, when everything I say and everything that I hear is perfect. And it's, it's filled with love. And it's filled with purity. And it's filled with uh, just uh, the, the heart of someone. I can't wait for that. I look forward to that. And it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Let's pray for you. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we can look at it and we can see some stuff. We get to see things, some stuff just really, really shakes us up. Shakes us up. Uh, I pray, Father, that, that every one of us in this room would look at this book as it is the word of God. It is. It's the word of God. That we would have such carefulness whenever we open it up. Uh, that, we, that we look forward to whatever it's going to say. It's, it's, Father, it's refreshing. It's, there's life here. We need you. We need you. We need you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Hey, look, man, uh, God's spoken to you. And would you talk to me? And just say, Don, you know, I need, I need to go in this direction. Or I want Jesus in my heart. I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, just a religion, man. I want the real deal. I want him. I want everything about him in my life. If you're like that, man, tell him about it. So Don, I want to get baptized. Whatever the case, the Lord's spoken to you. We're going to sing together. Lord, I need you. Would you stand with us and uh, stand with us? Chuck, now we're going to listen to closing prayer.
Sunday is Father's Day. And in between the services uh, at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a drop-in down in the Fellowship Hall. It's like uh, hors d'oeuvres that we're going to have. It's mainly get to know each other is what we really want to be of there. So please count on being there and recognizing fathers. Thank you. Father, in Jesus' name, we give honor to Christ this day. Thank you for what Jesus did for us on the cross. May we always look to him out in the name. We live in the first and last salvation of our soul. Thank you for a good work this morning. We have got to do this day to bring us back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.